Lady Charmaine Live Show. I want to thank you all for coming to the show today. As you see, my voice may not be at its best, but we're going to have a great time. Now, ladies, this show is just for you. So I want you to take a moment right now. Phone a friend, Facebook a friend, tweet your girlfriend, Pinterest to put a picture up there, and let her know to turn the TV on right now because this show is just for you. Oh, we got some handsome men that are going to be here today, and this show is going to be hot. Now, ladies, have you ever wondered why a man will date you for 20 years but never walk you down the aisle? Have you ever wondered, is chivalry dead? Is it dying off? Well, we're going to find out today. Are there still men out there that still open up the doors for the ladies? Well, guess what? We're going to talk about it today. And also, coming up, we got the ladies are going to be joining us on the show today. Mm -hmm. And we got six handsome, God-fearing men from all categories, from single, married, widowed, and divorced. And they're going to be giving us the 411, the dating tea. Oh, yeah, we're going to find out what really goes down in a man's mind. So we're going to answer all your questions today, ladies. And guess what? When those sisters join us, we might have us our very own Lady Charmaine Live Battle of the Sexes all coming up when we come back. <laughs> about to give us the 411 on all things dating. They're handsome and they're here to tell us the truth. And right now, I want to introduce my guests. We have pastor, author, Kelly Woods, employment recruiter, Derek Miller, Hello. college professor, Andre Jordan, financial planner, Oak the Mobs, cable repairman, Michael Durham, and audit associate, Busola Fatunla. Help me welcome them to the show. <laughs> Now, gentlemen, the number one question I get from women is, why won't men commit? And I'm going to start with you, Derek, on this one. Mm -hmm. Tell me, why won't men commit or why do they have trouble committing? I mean, they'll date you forever. Mm -hmm. Even put a ring on your finger. Mm -hmm. And that's what I call the eternal engagement. I meet women and say, oh, I've been engaged for 17 years. Right. Tell me, what is this problem? Uh, I think the main problem that we have in this uh, society in which we live in now, um, men uh, women, I should say, haven't given a man the, the, the reason to commit. And what I mean by that is that we're, she's giving everything up, uh, whether it's money, her body, whatever the case might be, before she even gets a ring on it. So one of the challenges that you have now is you want a man to now give you a commitment to something that he's already getting. What's that, what's that old adage about the milk? Why buy the cow and I get the milk for free? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things you have going on. We're so uh, readily, sex and everything is so readily available to us now. And that's one of the things I think uh, a, a lot of women need to pull back on a little bit. Don't give so much of yourself right now, then you might get the commitment. And you know, that, that's the way, that's one of the reasons that we, uh, women aren't really getting married like they want to because you're giving it all to them, mm -hmm. sometimes on the first date. And you have to just pull back, respect yourself, and it all starts right here in your mind um, and I think that's one of the reasons why men aren't committing it's not that we don't want to but sometimes you know why should I commit if I have everything else already now pastor was how do you feel about the same question yeah uh, very similar but it even goes even deeper than that um, sometimes uh, when we look at it men are stimulated by sight whereas a lot of times uh, women are stimulated by what they hear so for men coming up as as children, you know, going into adulthood, it's like, you know, by what we see on the outer appearance. So we can have that, we can have that, we can have that. And it uh, sort of keeps us sometimes from uh, making that commitment of saying, okay, just one, just, just one. So a lot of times society, you know, we find ourselves, it's just coming to that place of like uh, Derek said, of the woman saying, hey, there's time to make a decision about uh, the direction in life you know, for the relationship. And it, it, it brings that man to a place of making a decision of what's best for his life and what he should, you know, what he should be doing. And know? that's really interesting that you make mm -hmm. that point. Because I want to find out, when does a man know he's ready to commit? Mm -hmm. Andre, can you answer that question for me? Um, well, I know for me personally, um, 
In my relationship with my wife, I knew I was ready to commit because one, she held a standard. And I truly believe that's the, the cornerstone for a solid relationship, the standards that you set and keep. Um, I know for me in my journey through my social interaction through high school, college, and even into my early adulthood years, um, I was a, a cavalier. I could do what I want, when I want, how I wanted, and not really have much of a, uh, an emphasis of what the collateral damage could be to someone else. But then when I met my wife, she again maintained that standard and didn't compromise. Mm -hmm. And so to me, that was a very attractive thing because as we look at building relationships and trying to uh, achieve greater things in life, you realize that you get into a relationship for the purpose of building something that you couldn't build on your own. And for me, I need that architect to say, this is the standard that we're going to keep and we're going to hold together. And for me, that came with, you know, trials and tribulations, but I knew it because she held a standard. Oh, I love that. Ladies, hold a standard. So I'm going to ask you the same question. How did you know you're a married man? How did you know you were ready to commit? Um, I think I knew I was ready to commit. Um, when I didn't have a desire to think of anyone else. Um, just being real previous relationships, I, I knew it wasn't time to commit because while I was with you, I still had a desire in the back of my mind of thinking of other women or, you know, I mean, I wonder, you know, how she is or how is she in this area? Um, you know, I, I, you would either get someone who can cook really well but they may not be, you know, as social, right? You get somebody who's super social who can't cook, uh, or you get somebody who's super social, can't cook, but not the best looking. Um, <laughs> but in, uh, in my wife, I found she had it all. And so I knew when I met her, and we dated long distance for two years, and I think that was a huge thing is because all we had was the phone. Um, so it wasn't physical right away. So I knew who she was. I knew, you know, she knew who I was. So. I knew it was time when I when I was with her and around her. I didn't even think of other women. It, it was just her. So I knew it, I knew it was time. Okay, the same question for you, Michael. But I want to know because you're in the dating process or probably trying to get back on the scene. And many may not know he's a widow, and so now he's getting back into the dating scene. How will you know when you're ready to commit again? Well, I already know that I am looking forward to it. Is just finding the right person. I mm -hmm. want to find someone who has a lot of the same uh, uh, respects that I have, you know, who, she has to be God-fearing, you know, she has to be uh, uh, a home, uh, ready to take care of home, not just take care of home, but also be able to do what she needs to do to contribute to the house. Um, a lot of people say that a man is uh, uh, nervous about dating someone who might make more money or do better at this. I, that doesn't matter to me. If I can, if you are the first person I think about when I wake up in the morning, and the last person I think about before I go to bed, then I think that you might be in good contendership with that. Oh, oh I love that. that. Now, Bruce, I want to ask you this question: In your dating process, if a woman withholds sex, is she more likely to get a ring? <sighs> According to my standards, she probably, yes. she definitely would. Um, definitely one of the things I look at in a woman or anyone that I'm dating is the fact that she has to be God-fearing. Um, she abides by God's word. Um, we're all human and, you know, we're all going to er err in our ways, but I'm not looking for anyone that's perfect, but I do want to find someone, you know, that is living by God's, God's words and standards. Um, so sex is not a huge driver for me. I am a man and those desires are there, um, but definitely it's it's definitely going to propel me to actually offer that ring up. Now, Pastor, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. In a relationship, love, happiness, and purpose, to a lot of Christians, that's very important. Mm -hmm. But how important is the love and happiness than it is with purpose? Well, love and happiness is number one. At least for what I would be looking for is uh, a, a deep, intense love with a person, being able to connect uh, you know, emotionally and spiritually. Um, uh, happiness, uh, you want to be happy, particularly in my position, uh, being a second time around, uh, if I want to get married again, I'm definitely looking for happiness and j real joy uh, in, the, in the relationship. And of, of course, purpose is uh, very important, uh, but for me, per for me, because I, I was in a 20-year marriage and was able to build a church and do different things, I'm looking more for more the emotional type of things. Purpose is good, it keeps you on track, but I believe if you have love 
and happiness, it'll keep all that just calibrated. And, you know, I, you know. I want to thank you for that. And when we come back, we're going to find out what are some of the dating turnoffs for a man and three things men are looking for in a woman. And is chivalry dead? Is it dying off? We're going to find out when we come back. station that plays uplifting music with an inspirational message. Praise 98 FM Jams is your station. Log on to praise98fm.com from anywhere in the world and get your praise on with artists like Kirk Franklin. Even though I've been here for a while, still, Dawkins and Dawkins. And Mary Mary. It's music the whole family can enjoy. Listen to Lady Charmaine live weekdays at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for great interviews, contest giveaways, and entertainment news. Listen to Praise 98 FM jams at work, at home, or on the go. Download the free TuneIn Radio app on your smartphone and search Praise 98 FM and start jamming today. We want you to like us on Facebook at Praise 98 FM jams and join the Praise 98 FM jams family. Log on right now at www.praise. 98fm.com, your worldwide radio alternative. Internet radio never sounded so good. And we're back. And we're talking about what men really want in a woman. Now, we found out on Lady Charmaine Live that before marriage, we know that there's a dating process. So we're going to find out what do men really want in a woman. And during that dating process, what kind of data do they really collect? So I'm starting with you, Pastor Woods. <laughs> in your dating process, mm -hmm. what kind of data do you collect when you're dating a woman? Well, the first thing for me is uh, someone that's godly and really has a heart for God. Um, someone that is uh, gentle in spirit, has a gentle spirit. Um, what the vision and goals are and how that can complement my life and how I can complement theirs, as well as I'm trying to find out what their previous, if there was a previous marital status, if they're children, and a big thing for me is my children are grown, two of them are grown and the other teenagers, so I'm not looking for little kids. <laughs> <laughs> little kids is a, is a, a deal breaker, so <laughs> 15 and above, 15 and above. <laughs> so those things are, are important, and, and of course, um, for me being a, a divorcee is one, I'm looking for uh, things that are different in me as well as in that person than I did first time around. So I'm learning from my mistakes as well as trying to see how, you know, the future could be with that particular person. Right. So yeah, definitely everybody, if I date someone, it's, I'm collecting data. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Now, Busola, you being a single man, never married. Right now, what are you looking for in a woman? Ah, uh, just a good old time. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Um, definitely I am getting to that point in my age where I would like to settle down. And um, I am looking for a God-fearing woman. Um, looking for someone who has a kind soul and is very jovial. Um, and very important to me is someone that actually inspires my greatness as well. And where it's like a reciprocal um, relationship. So someone that has those features and can actually add to the relationship and not just rely on one person, you know, providing that support is what I'm aiming for. Okay. Now, Michael, I want to know, is chivalry dead? I hear a lot of women say that chivalry is dead because a lot of young men in like their 20s, they don't know how to open up doors for the ladies. And I want to know from your point of view, is chivalry dead or is it dying off? Chivalry, it is... Uh... It is a dying breed, you know. I'm, I'm seeing that a lot of brothers do not know how to treat a lot of women. Like, one of my favorite songs is The Temptations, Treat Her Like a Lady. You know, I like opening up the doors and picking up hankies off the floor. I, you, know, I'm, I, you know, I'm that, but then I've gone out with some people who, some women who say they, you know, you don't have to open my door. I got my own door. I said, no, that's my job. Let me do what I do. You know, but a lot of women don't know how to receive it because it's not there. Right. It's not existing like it used to be. You know, it's a dying breed. You know, brothers are more inclined to walk around with their pants sagging down than mm -hmm. look presentable when they're on a date with a nice woman. So, number one, I believe a man should look presentable. You know, he should be able to take care of himself because if you're going out with somebody, you're representing that person you're going out with. Likewise, she's representing you. That's true. Otha, if you're dating a woman, I know you're married, but in your dating process and you're collecting data, you were dating a woman and you found out, uh, it's just not working. 
How do you let her know and let her down easily? I say it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> it's, okay. um, there is no letting it down easy. It is, I mean, I'm just a type of person. It is what it is. Um, if we're not meshing, I'm gonna let you know, because I, 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 would, I would expect that she would do it for me. You know what I'm saying? I'm the type of person, if I got something on my face, tell me. You know, if my breath stink, tell me, and I'm gonna do the same for you. So um, <laughs> if I'm dating someone, or you know, when I was dating, and it's not working, I'm gonna say it just like that. Hey, this is not working, because I'm, I value my time. I value my time, and I, don't, I just don't get how people they know the relationship isn't working and they keep trying to trying to try and, and it's just a bunch of time being wasted i believe in end it and let's move on because there's somebody better for me out there and vice versa so okay now andre during the dating process i know you're married as well but you know couples like to go out and kind of get to know each other and they like to have fun besides just going to church and singles couples meetings and yeah. you know and church. <laughs> But some couples like to go to the club and have fun, just them two. How do you feel about that? Well, um, I definitely was a, a social butterfly and still am. So going to the club, to be quite transparent, my, my girlfriend at the time, who was now my wife, we would go out to events and go out to lounges and clubs because it was our way to just let loose and have fun, but responsibly. Um, we would support um, a lot of the events that were happening in uh, Sacramento. Millerism was one of them. And it was wholesome fun in the sense where you are still engaging with the people that you go to church with, that you fellowship with. You're just doing it now over music, over at a patio. So that's what we did. And we didn't see anything wrong with it because I think a lot of times we have this spiritual canopy that would say, yeah. thou shall not <laughs> dot, 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 fill in the blank. Right. And by no means did we want to ever govern ourselves under the, the misguided direction of someone else's principle. So we just said, if we're having fun, we're engaging in something that's not harmless, is not eroding our moral, ethical values, and so be it, right. you know, but do so responsibly because we all have in the back of our mind, I shouldn't be doing this because if so-and-so from the church see me, it's a wrap. <laughs> if Deacon so-and-so come around that corner, not realizing Deacon so-and-so is right next to you enjoying <laughs> their time as well. But again, I think it's just the responsibility that we took upon ourselves to say, you know what? You can't govern yourself by everyone else's opinions because if you do so, now everyone else's opinion is governing your relationship rather than the two people that's engaged mm. in it. Derek, I got a question for you. <coughs> now, I know you single, <laughs> but engaged. <laughs> exactly. How, I know the Bible tells us that women, we should dress modestly. But how do you feel about your spouse or future spouse dressing sexy when you go out? Um, I think that's one of the things that actually attracted me to her, not the way that she dressed. It was really mild-mannered. Um, it was mild, but it was sexy to me. And I think that that's very important. Sexy is subjective. Um, I don't want a woman, I, I'm, I'm turned off by a woman if, if her skirt is too high, because to me, it tells me a lot about your character. Um, there are a lot of things that you can wear nowadays that are sexy, mm -hmm. and it's, it's modest. And I think that's the way some women need to become more accustomed to that. But with the music that we hear nowadays, mm -hmm. Um, some women feel like they need to dress a certain way because young Jeezy or whatever, I don't know if y'all heard of them before or him, but some of the music is suggesting that I need to be provocative, provocative in my dress. Then when you start dressing provocative, now you can't understand why men treat you the way that they do. And so that's one of the things that I, I appreciate about my, my fiance is that she's very modest in her dress, but it's sexy to me. That's good. And I think that that's very important. Thank you. And when we come back, we're going to talk about natural hair. How do men really feel about women going natural, wearing afros? How about weaves and froze and cornrows and dreadlocks? We're going to talk about all that when we come back. <laughs> Lady Charmaine Live is sponsored in part by Savali Hair. For more information, go online to SavaliHair.com. men really want in a woman and we're going to find out is beauty really only skin deep Derek I want to know how do you feel about women going natural everybody's going back to their natural state and wearing afros I mean representing for real how do you feel about it 
Um, natural is good if you can wear it well. Mm. Um, sometimes that, that natural needs to be beautified <laughs> a little, <laughs> if you will. But, uh, no, I, 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 um, I appreciate the natural. Uh, personally speaking, I'm not really fond, excuse me, of a lot of makeup. I mean, I, you know, you have to wear it on television or whatever the case might be, but I'm not really fond of a lot of makeup, uh, maybe a little lip gloss or some eyeliner or whatever the case might be. But like, you know, beautiful to me is, is um, Indiari, um, Lettucey. Um, that's natural beauty to me because again, they don't have to necessarily put a lot of makeup on uh, or do their hair, perm their hair. Now, there's nothing wrong with perming your hair, by all means. Perm your hair, make sure you look good. Um, if you have to put a weave in occasionally, depending on what you have to do, that's fine as well. But I'm for natural. Natural is a really, a really good look. And I think that if you wear it well, by all means. I, I, you know, I, the thing that I'm, I, that I'm afraid of is when you take off all the makeup, and then I don't recognize <laughs> you. I mean, when you don't wipe your face down, I'm thinking, like, who, who are you? You know, so that's my thought process. So I'm more of a kind of, I'm more subtle as, as far as that goes. But it is subjective. Okay. So, Andre, how do you feel about that? Uh, I like natural, um, but I think I'm more of a proponent for the whatever way you rock it to where you feel comfortable in your skin, so be it. Because, again, like Derek mentioned, you have the wide gambit of people who can wear the natural and look good, and other people, their natural might just be a little extension here, a little cornrow here. Um, for me, again, in terms of my wife specifically, she's natural, and she wore it very well. Um, there was only one instance where she had put in a wig, a weave, or I wasn't there for the process. I don't know. I just saw the end product. Um, and she felt comfortable, and to me, that's still sexy. So whatever you rock that makes you feel confident and sexy, that's going to exude and people are going to be attracted to that. And that's for me, if it's a ball fade, if it's the afro with the pick with the fist in it, <laughs> rock it out. Just as long as you feel comfortable with it because your confidence is going to exude, surpass your hairstyle. Go ahead. Can I add something to yes. that? Because, and, and ladies, I'm saying this. Um, don't go from a lot of hair to all of a sudden you cut it all off and then you didn't talk to your, your, your husband or your fiance or someone. Because when you spring that on them, all mm. of a sudden, then that, that might have an adverse effect. Right. So you want to kind of, you want to let them know, this is what I, my plans are. You don't want to just all of a sudden come home one day and you got the ball fade right. going. Right, great job. Because that might be a problem. <laughs> so I'm, so I'm just kind of, that's a, a little note. Yeah, that will be a now, although I want to know for you, because a lot of men look at things on women to be attractive. And how important is like, Feet and teeth to you. You gotta have them. Um, <laughs> I, I, that's for me. Mm -hmm. That's like if one at the top of my list. I'm a feet guy. Um, and teeth. Um, you 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 gotta have them. You yeah. Gotta have them. Yeah. I just think it's All very very important for, to take care of those things on us. You know, not just on women. On me, my me and my wife, we'll both will get a pedicure and you know manicure and pedicure together. Because I believe that, you know, it all comes into play. You know, you can't have the hammer time um, <laughs> because it's just, it's just not a good look. And that's just me personally. You got to take pride in who you are and what you look like. Um, and teeth and feet is important on a woman. It's been there because they want to wear open toe shoes. <laughs> you know what I mean? And the toe needs, it needs and then they hang over. <laughs> you just know the, what the I mean? And problem. then you see, you know, then you take your shoes off later and then the tip of your toes are dirty, which means they were dragging on the floor. <laughs> and the shoe was too small. The shoe was too small, right. you know, so it all comes into I'm sorry. You need a French tip on, you know, your teeth sometimes be French tip too. So coming in just tipped. So um, it's very important. A uh, tip for me, it is. Give me your opinions on a sexy, modest woman. How important is that to you? Sexy, I think, I think consistency is sexy if you're going to be consistent one way stay that way don't be trying to change up because you met a new friend and that friend is trying to influence you to do something else the way i met you i liked you the way i met you be consistent that way don't be trying to change up in the process you know i like you the way you are uh 
Natural, I like natural. I do. But the thing is, the key word to natural is upkeep. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have to be able to upkeep whatever you decide to do. Uh, I don't want to, like, like you said, you know, if you have to, you marry somebody, when I wake up in the morning, I don't want to wake up to Leah. I want to wake up to Rachel. Mm -hmm. You know, I want the person who I work for, I want the person who I pursue. You know, so don't surprise me. You know, <laughs> you know sexy is, uh, uh, if you're comfortable with yourself, that's sexy. You know, if you're comfortable with the way you look, the way you dress, that's sexy. You know, uh, just be consistent with who you are, you know. Uh, your appearance, take care of your appearance, you know, don't, you know, have a bad day or if it's, I'm sorry, that time of the month, don't let that influence the way you look, you know. Yeah. Still be able to take care of yourself. You know, I want to be able to go out. I want to be able to to let you be that Proverbs 31 woman. You know, you're a special ruby. A ruby is something that we're going to put on a pedestal. We're going to show it off. You know, I want to be able to show you off. And I don't want to be ashamed of who you are because you started tripping in the process. <laughs> you know, be that Proverbs 31 woman. Be, be that virtuous woman, you know. Virtue, that virtue, that pro third, Proverbs 31 is sexy to me. Why don't you do it? That's sexy to me. That was very good. Ladies, don't start tripping in the process. <laughs> Coming up, are you a thirsty sister? Well, we're going to give you some signs of a thirsty sister when we come back. Hey, do you want to be a part of our live studio audience? For free tickets, go online to ladycharmainliveshow.eventbrite.com and join the fun today. There is a new term to describe a desperate woman, and it is called thirsty. We're going to give you six signs to let you know if you are suffering from extreme thirstiness. We have our dating coach and dating expert and friend to Lady Charmaine Live, April Mason. She's going to give you the signs to let you know if you're suffering from thirstiness. Now, April, I have a question for you. We have so many women who are suffering from thirstiness, even in the church. Why don't they realize that Jesus is actually their thirst quencher? To be honest with you, there's a few reasons. Number one, they don't know who they are in Christ first. Because when God says he created you to be, you know, fearfully and beautifully, you made and all those things, we don't really believe that because a lot of times when you don't have anyone validating who you are, we can hear what the scripture says, but if we don't have a relationship with God, it's kind of like, yeah, I read that, but I need somebody to tell me that I'm fabulous. I need to, I, my dad wasn't around to tell me how fabulous I am and give me that value. So now I need it from a man. And in addition to that is, as women, Christian women, we're taught that we don't need to be unequally yoked with anyone. So now, as soon as a brother comes to the church, it's like, that's my husband. God said, that's my husband. Because there aren't a lot of, especially African-American men in church that are um, in the position to lead as the spiritual leader in the household. So now, it, even if you weren't thirsty, it makes you thirsty when you decide, you know what, it's that time I'm ready to settle down. And every man that comes in the church now, you do things that you normally say you wouldn't do. You find yourself doing them because you really are thirsty. Now you gave us six signs. One of the signs is you said you're always available. Talk about that. Women that are always available leave no room for the chase. Um, and I, I get a lot of women that say, well, you know what, he called me and asked me out. And the thing is, you have to wonder what time did he call and ask you out? <laughs> if he called and asked you out about eight, nine, 10 o'clock, you're his second or third choice. Don't be available for that. Have something going on in your life. What I've learned about men is they do love a woman that has something going on in her life other than him. He wants something to support. He wants something to be proud of. If you're always up under him, you don't give him time to breathe, what you're doing, where you're going. Who wants to be with that? That's like having a mama. We don't want and that. And number two, you say you buy men gifts to show them you are a good woman. Okay, so many women think that they want to, they forget that they are the gym. They're the jewel. So they want to show you how great of a woman that they are. Let me buy him this. Or in general conversation, have you guys ever heard somebody talking about what they wanted and you want to go buy it just to show them you were listening? If a man's really not into you, he's going to take your gift and say thank you and that's it. So you don't have to, if he likes you, he's going to like you for you, not the gifts that you buy. Number three, you say you stalk his social media pages to find out where he is, 
so you can show up. Now this one right here, it, it's epidemic. I promise you it is. I'm, a friend of mine was telling me the other day that someone, girl signed up, got a different Facebook profile, has been stalking him, and he, she starts to show up at all of his events. Because one thing, you ever had those exes and you kind of still like them a little bit and you want to show them what they missed out on. So they stalk him and find out where he's going to be and then they show up. Mm -hmm. That's thirstiness. Okay, you make excuses for why he doesn't contact you regularly. Now, this one is one that a lot of women do that they don't realize that, that they do because they like the guy. If a man is not calling you, he's not returning your texts or anything, he's just not that into you. Never make an excuse of he's so busy, he's, oh, he's flying, girl, he's he always on the jet. No, no, no. Everybody has phones and can text. It only takes a second to text. So stop making excuses for why he's behaving in such a manner and just accept the fact that he, he's just not that into you. And then you say, you always initiate the contact. Yes. Stop texting and calling these men. If they want you, they will come after you. It's okay to every night, you know, to once he's shown that he's earned that and that he's chasing you, text him back, okay, I can, I can respond. But don't always, good morning, God bless you, and have a wonderful and prosperous day. You want to you show him that you're caring. He don't care. Because if he doesn't return your text back, he just showed you he didn't care. And number six, you say, you drop your standards to have a man. How many of us have always said that he got to have this, 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 and this, but as soon as you meet someone that don't have all of those qualifications, not, not a constant thing you can compromise on, but things that are like deal breakers to you, and then all of a sudden, now because he shows you halfway that he's a decent guy, but your spirit ain't all the way right, you still deal with him anyway, you drop your standards because you want to be with somebody. We can't do that any, any longer, as well as you have to have a standard. A lot of women say, I'm a, I dropped my standard, but a lot of them, you ask them what their standard was, they can't tell you. It just sounds good because that's what we're told, girl, have a standard. But when you ask them, what actually is your standard? They really can't tell you. Now, man, I have a question. How do you spot a thirsty sister? Everything she just said. <laughs> <laughs> um, some of the things she said um, are, are true. I personally like the text in the morning, how you doing, or whatever the case might be. I think you establish, I think you say after you establish. After you establish, That, yes. you know, um, and, I, and I think it's a very fine line because if you get to that place where you pull too far back on the thirstiness, so to speak, then it can have an adverse effect, and I've said that before. So um, thirsty is, to me, when you show up and you, you have this expectation that I'm going to do everything. I'm going to give you everything. Um, that's signs of thirstiness to me, when you have the expectation that I'm going to do everything for you. Um, oh, just to be real. I've, the thirstiness um, I've found, and maybe you know some of y'all can agree, that um, it increases when you are married. Um, you know, just to be real, I've, I've come across a lot more thirsty women because I am married. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas when I was single, well, they wasn't, they was nowhere around. <laughs> um, it made me feel like, man, I should have just wore a ring right. <laughs> just to wear one right. because they are. And how do you, you spot them? Because they are just, they always in your face. They always smile and they always want to give you a hug. Right. I, I mean, I know I smell good, but you you know what cologne I have on today and you know what I'm saying? And that's how you can spot them. But um, they're always around and I think they show up a little bit more when they know you're taken. Taken, right. Yeah. We're going to take some questions from our audience. You have a question? Yes, I'd like to ask um, Basola. OK, what I want to know is that with you being from Nigeria, would you expect an American woman to operate in Nigerian culture? Um, now we're talking African American, <laughs> or are we talking? Um, it wouldn't matter. Um, definitely, I'd want her to actually learn my culture, learn my ways, and um, be able to, you know, live in, in, in that certain in that certain manner. But I wouldn't try and change her. I wouldn't try and change anything about her culture. I'd actually if anything, learn more about where she's from and just try and get a good mix of both of us. Because there's nothing, there's, there's nothing wholesome about a relationship when you're trying to alter the person for who they really are. So.
You have a question? Yeah, my question is for April. So I date a woman and things don't work out. We decided to part ways and it's mutual. But then all of a sudden, she tells all of her friends that I'm off limits now. So why is that? Would you want your boys dating a girl that you've been with? Like your, all your friends, not, not acquaintances, but your close friends. Would you want your close friends dating a girl that you was been with for a year or so? So, okay, this is, we, we being real, right? Okay. My brother had three children with a woman that I used to date. I was okay with it because I saw that they had much better chance for romance in a relationship than I did with her. So I didn't want to stand in the way of his happiness. And it ended up that, you know, it was a positive scenario. Well, you're a different kind. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't think, but, but if it's, if it's I'm wondering, when you say relationship, I'm thinking if you were, if it was a situation where two people were just dating, uh -huh. and I've done that, I've dated people before and saw that my friend made a better match, I would hook her up with them because we were dating, it was okay. not a relationship. Okay. But if I'm in a relationship with you and it's been a year, six months, two years, my best friend could not date the man that I was with because she's been exposed. I mean, we went out on vacations together. And also in my mind, it's going to go back to, well, what was going on? So if it's hmm. a dating situation, I have no problem with that. But if it's a relationship, it's just some things that you should just be off limits. Okay. Thank you. Now, that is a good question for Jermaine and Randy Jackson. Because, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, Jermaine married Randy's ex-wife and had a couple of kids mm -hmm. by her, too. Wow. That's a good Jackson mm -hmm. question. Wow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. As you know, there's a process to uh, all things that are uh, fabulous for a female, for her to be fabulous. And at night, when a woman prepares to get ready for bed, I want to know how you guys feel about the um, scars that <laughs> black women mostly have to wear on their hair to keep their hair together um, for the next day. Do you think it's sexy or do you think it's a turn off? Or how do you guys feel about that? It's face. Mm -hmm. Oh, I. Yeah, uh, your face. <laughs> your face is telling off. No, no, no. Your I, face. Partially <laughs> speaking, um, if you're attracted to her already, it doesn't matter if she had rollers in her hair, if you're attracted to her. I mean, it's, it's subjective, but the reality of it is, is you know, um, if you're attracted. I mean, I think that's trivial. Um, if, you, if you fall out with me because, or you fall out with her because you wrapped your hair and you don't look as pleasant as you do during the day, I mean, I think it's a very trivial issue. And you might have to question him, like, where is your loyalty? Were you really attracted to me in the first place? If I put the scarf on my head, now you're not attractive to me. That's, that's, that's really um, juvenile, if I might use that term. I, I would just want to add to that. Well, <coughs> I think it's conditioned upon what's happening in the bedroom at the time. Because, <laughs> again, yeah. as we talked about from the natural hair to how confident you are, that's part of the upkeep. You wrap it so that way it's not looking like SpongeBob or whatever the next morning. <laughs> but I think also... The bedroom has a sanctity of romance that should be established and maintained. So if you're, again, winding down the night and you and your partner are looking to engage in extracurricular activities, if you start pinning it up and doing all this other stuff, then that's going to kill the mood extremely quickly. Granted, you're beautiful, you're fearfully, wonderfully made, but right now, yeah. that rag is not really doing it for me. And so just being able to be honest and transparent Again, you all have your upkeep. We can't monitor or govern that, but we can insert our little opinion into the box to say, maybe not right now. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when y'all buy her satin pillowcases. Mm -hmm. And that could be a part of the negotiation. Because yeah. I know I go to bed looking like an astronaut. I've been married 15 years this year. <laughs> okay. I have a question for Pastor Woods, and I wanted to know, how has your previous marriage and your role as a pastor affected the new standards you have for a wife or the standards you have for a future wife? Man, that's, a, that's a very good question. I honestly thought because I was uh, married for so long and a pastor that uh, a second time around would be easy, almost like I could say, you know, you or you, <laughs> you know, uh, knowing how to be a married man because that's what I've been, you know, the majority of my adult life. Uh, but I'm finding that it's uh, even more difficult with the fear of not repeating the same step. So it actually makes it harder than the first time around where I got married because I didn't know any different. But it makes it harder now and the, the filters and the lenses that I'm looking through 
you know, uh, the, the scrutiny sometimes is, you know, probably unfair to uh, potential dates. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I have a question just for like everyone. So if a woman asks a man out on a date, who should pay for it? A man. Uh, <laughs> we have two differing of opinions here. Wow. Yeah, I'm gonna say, or that always, always pays. That's right. That's, that's, that's chivalry. That's, that's chivalry. chivalry. That's, you know, uh, I'm if I go out, yeah, I'm know. prepared to fit the bill. If I can't fit the bill, then I'm like, you know what? We're gonna have to reschedule this. You know, and uh, you know, Derek, I, what do you have to say about that? I, I disagree, and I, I'm all for chivalry. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not opposed to, never have been, a woman paying for me to take me out to eat. And that doesn't make me less of a man. Right. Um, I, I think that if it becomes a, a, a situation where she's doing all the giving, that could be a problem. And there's no chivalry in that. But if a woman asks and, and offers to, now, you know, there's no problem with you taking the initiative to say, okay, I'll, I, I got this today. But your pockets could be low. <laughs> right. You know, your money could be funny. Right. Your change is strange, is what they say sometimes. Yeah. You know, so, you know, I, I just, I, I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm open to that. I, I'm, I don't think that that questions your manhood at all. Mm, That's just me personally. Yeah. Thank you for your question. question. And coming up, the ladies are going to be joining the conversation, and we're going to have our very own Battle of the Sexes when we come back. <laughs> For a station that plays uplifting music with an inspirational message, Praise 98 FM Jams is your station. Log on to praise98fm.com from anywhere in the world and get your praise on with artists like Kirk Franklin, Dawkins and Dawkins, and Mary Mary. It's music the whole family can enjoy. Listen to Lady Charmaine Live weekdays at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for great interviews, contest giveaways, and entertainment news. Listen to Praise 98 FM jams at work, at home, or on the go. Download the free TuneIn Radio app on your smartphone and search Praise 98 FM and start jamming today. We want you to like us on Facebook at Praise 98 FM Jams and join the Praise 98 FM Jams family. Log on right now at www.praise. 98fm.com, your worldwide radio alternative. Internet Welcome radio to the show. never sounded so good. Now it's time for the ladies to weigh in on the topic. They're going to give us their 50 cent on what the men had to say. I want you to help me welcome to the show Stacia Moff. She's a school teacher and wife, entrepreneur Juanita Walker, and also stay at home mom Kelly Mullins. Help me welcome my guest to the show. Okay, now ladies, you heard what the men had to say. Starting with you, Anita, what did you think about what they had to say? Which one? Oh, that's good. How about on dating? On dating? Being a Christian woman, I govern myself by the word of God. If a man is interested in me, he needs to come to me. I do not chase men. I don't think women should chase men. The Bible says, he who finds a wife findeth a good thing. The question that I have for a man is, what are your intentions? Don't waste my time. I'm not going to waste your time. We're not going to play boyfriend and girlfriend for two, three, four, five years because a man cannot take fire into his bosom and his clothes not be burned. And my body is the temple in which the Holy Spirit is housed. We're not going to play that. Yeah. Now, I have a question for the men, though, really quickly. How long should people actually date before you even get into a committed relationship? How long is too long? Because some people date a very long time before even an engagement. I'm going to ask you, Derek. How long is too long to, to date? Date, yeah. Especially we being Christian. Juanita made a good point. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Well, I think the, if you're, uh, again, I'll go back to that word attraction. You know, the level of attraction um, will always bring you to that point where you want to get married or whatever the case might be. And, and I think that it's, 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 imperative that women hold true to you know what their to their morals to their goals and to their self-respect don't give in to what he's asking for initially and then if you continue to go on then you'll know that his interest is very genuine so i don't know if there's ever necessarily a number on that i think the the, the woman would have to determine that but i think 
as long as there's some chemistry, I don't think that there's necessarily a, a number that needs to be placed on the, the years of dating. Well, that's not true. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I talk about that in my book, Exploring the Gray Areas, shameless oh. plug. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, I call it the one in one rule, one year of dating, one year of engagement. But that's based upon if a person is in a position to be dating someone in the first place. If you're, if you're not finished with school or have a job to be able to support a, a wife eventually or be able to do the things you need to do, you shouldn't try to step to anyone like that, uh, to a woman like that in the first place. If you're in a position where you're saying, I've assessed myself, I'm uh, man enough to be able to, to uh, ask a woman for a date and that could potentially turn into a marriage, then you should be, you know, I, you should be two years out from, you know, being able to put a ring on it and, uh, and being married. I have a question for Stacia really quickly. Stacia, is it okay for a woman to ask a man out on a date, especially if she's interested? I, I think it's okay. Um, as far as paying is concerned, you know, that could be, you know, discussed later. But I feel like if a female is interested in a guy, there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, would you like to, you know, go out for coffee? later on tonight or you know go to the movies a, cl a closed mouth don't get fit yep. so if you don't ask then it won't happen i think a lot of times females wait you know so long for the guy to do this and the guy to do that instead of being proactive there's a difference in being proactive and being a bugaboo and a pest and thirsty and all of that but i don't think there's anything wrong with you know asking a guy out to dinner or lunch or anything like that so it's okay for the woman to make the first move Absolutely. Because you might be missing out on a blessing, you think? Absolutely. Oh, what about you? Did you miss out on any blessings? Did you get a blessing? I got my blessing. <laughs> <laughs> she, has, she has a great story of how she got her husband. I was hoping she was going to tell it, but she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to know, for you, Kelly, what are some of the turnoffs in dating for you? I know you've been married for quite some time, but what are some of the dating turnoffs? Well, my husband and I have been married. We had been married ten. We've been married ten years, and you know, I, there wasn't a lot of turnoffs um, when we dated, which is why I married him. Um, we dated. We dated as Christians. You know, there was a lot of chivalry. There was a lot of accountability, and so he really knew um, how to handle himself, and he really knew, uh, you know, how to make me feel like a woman, how to make me feel pursued. And um, there was one turnoff that I had mentioned um, in the pre-interview. And uh, he, my husband had, had two kids when we were married. And um, at one point, we were dating, and uh, my battery died. And I needed him to be the hero, but he needed to get his kids back. <laughs> so in that situation, he actually did the right thing. You know, he let me, you know... I can't remember how I got back, but um, you know he wasn't the hero in that situation. That was a real turnoff. Um, although I understand why he did it, because at that time his kids needed to come first. Um, but not being the hero um, would be a turnoff. So you know. Now, ladies, do you think chivalry is dead? Do you think it's dying off? You ask the men. What's your opinion? You ask them. Juanita. I love chivalry. I absolutely love it. Do you think it's dead though or do you think it's dying off? It's not dead for me because I choose who I choose to have in my space. Mm -hmm. And if the man doesn't display that to me in the beginning, I'm not going to teach him. At my age and <laughs> lifetime, I don't have time for that. He needs to already be at that level. Although that's not saying that he will already know the things that I like and dislike. I'm willing to share those things. But on that first initial date, you got to bring it. I mean, bring it big, too. Yeah. Derek? So, I have a question. Juanita? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Miss Juanita. Um, so, what if he, he's a chivalrous gentleman on the first date, first couple of dates, mm -hmm. okay? And the following week or months later, all of a sudden now, you find yourself standing by your door mm -hmm. um, and maybe even get a honk at the, the door every once in a while waiting for you to come out. Um, because, see... Chival what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, I guess chivalry sometimes it it the the what's the representative, mm -hmm. a man's representative, can get you, and then now you're, what happens? What how do you how do you handle that? All that. of a sudden now it's not I'm not chivalrous after about a month later. Well, one big thing is you teach people how to treat you. Okay. When I was a young girl, I had five sisters and two brothers. It was eight in the Walker household. My dad was there. My mom was there. We never answer to a honking horn. 
Number one, you come and you knock on the door and you ask for who you want to take out. Even today, when I go out to dinner or wherever I may go, I don't move until he comes around and opens that door. When we go back to that car, if he goes and gets in his seat, I'm going to stand there until he opens my door. I teach people how to treat me. I am the queen that God said I am, and my king is out there waiting for his good thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Say lie on that one. <laughs> Can I get an amen? <laughs> we have a question from our audience. Uh, my question would be for one of the gentlemen. Do you expect a woman um, to play house, to play pretend, cook and clean before getting married? Hmm. I would, if I can take oh, a shot at that one. Um, it's not the expectation that you would play house or pretend those particular activities or skill sets. It would hopefully be indicated that you have those skill sets because, again, part of the whole pursuit of a relationship is to find someone that can be of a compliment to you. So I'm not saying you need to cook, clean, wash my dishes, anything to that effect, but I need to know that you're able to be responsible to do those things for yourself. So when in doubt we engage in that relationship and evolves to something more serious, that I'm not now trying to create a job description that was never there in the beginning. So the whole playing house thing and shacking up is a big no-no because again, it goes back to what you even talked about where you set a standard. And I think for most women, they don't realize the power that they have in relationships where mm -hmm. you set the bar. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, does he have the ability to get up there and grab right. it? Yeah. And if you want to water that down, lower your standards to engage a more wider pool of fools and idiots that aren't even worth your time and attention, mm -hmm. then that's on you. But we're not playing shack it up or house Amen. in my house. Amen. Amen. Now, now, what if she's not living with you, but she want to cook a brother a meal every now and then? Oh, by all means, okay? the invitation is open. You can <laughs> display your culinary skills as much as you want, and I will, I will yeah. definitely entertain that. Yeah. But I, I think to the point of your question is, you know, I don't want you to be playing house or trying to show yourself approved to be my mate. You should have that skill set. If not, learn it. Find out. There's YouTube. There's other avenues in which you can figure that out. Mm -hmm. But do that as a, as a way to validate who you are to yourself. And real will recognize real yeah. mm -hmm. and appreciate that. Awesome. Thank you. You have a question? I do. My question is for one of the men on the panel. Do you expect your woman to have characteristics of your mother. Mm. Oh. Absolutely. Yes, indeed. I think it's very important, especially if you love your mom, which I absolutely do. Uh, one of the characteristics of my mom is, um, and I was tell, sharing with the gentleman during the break, is that she absolutely takes, takes care of my dad. Uh, my mom and dad have been married going on 43 years. Mm -hmm. And my mom, every milestone birthday, she's, you know, invite people from out of town, surprise birthdays and things of that nature. And she can cook. So, and I don't cook, so it's, uh, <laughs> that's a characteristic that, I mean, I, I need and I, and I value uh, in my now fiancé. So, absolutely, I think the characteristics of my mother are phenomenal. She's right. meek, mild-mannered, doesn't mind, you know, doing a lot of the work. She doesn't need the, the light shined on her, so to speak. So, her ego is not big either. So, I appreciate that about her. Thank you for your question. That was a good question. You have a question? For the men on the panel, what do you think about uh, an engaged couple moving in together before they get married to save money for the wedding? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> there again, it goes back to what I said about being prepared to be married. It takes grown people to mm -hmm. be married. And, um, you know, saving, there's nothing, nothing in the Bible said, thou shalt have a big wedding, right. therefore you can shack up or, or move in together. I have. Mm -hmm a lot of young couples in my church who have done that and they say they've done that without having sex but I'm thinking that's more of the rare situation than the norm. It goes back to your initial uh, question, your very first question that you asked about commitment and I think when you move in with each other and you're doing all the married people things, you're paying bills together, whatever the case might be, what's to stop him from leaving? What makes him want to even validate the relationship with, by marrying you? when you've already given into that. Because if you're living together, you're doing what married folk do. Mm -hmm. right. Let's just be real mm -hmm. with each other. Right. So mm -hmm. I think uh, there's nothing more exciting than looking and anticipating that honeymoon. Right. Uh, you know, and so, you know, keep your, keep your own. You stay over here, I stay there. That's the way yeah. I look at it. Right. I'd like to add to that. The husband is the house bondman. And he is the provider. He takes care of the household. Mm. Now, if the woman is not working, 
and he's working, or if she is working and they're both working, he needs to make sure that he is able to provide for that household in the event she's not working. So in reading the scriptures, even if I'm not working and we're living in two separate places when we begin to become a couple and become one, he needs to make sure that he can provide for me. Not because I'm working and because we combined our incomes, no. Because you're the house bondman and you can provide for your household. Awesome. Thank you. Derek? No, I was saying, one of the problems we have, and I hear a lot of scripture going on now, a lot of people aren't using scripture. They're using some scripture, but they're not applying all scripture to the context of their relationship. And so that's where you're going to have a problem because a lot of men are going to look at, I have to take care of everything. You're not going to work now. <laughs> right. You know, no, because that's not what I'm saying. No, 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 no. no I'm not saying that. I, I, I think what you said was, was important. I'm just saying we're not using the entire Bible to validate our relationships nowadays. Well, when you say people, we, who are you talking about? Because are you using that in general? Or are you using a specific set of people? General setting nowadays, people don't use the word of God to validate. It's like we use certain pieces of it, just like that scripture. In Ephesians, mm -hmm. they're gonna use that one scripture I that I wore, I, yeah, that I lowered yeah. over you, but they don't talk about the other part where you're supposed to treat your wife as Christ tr treated the church. Right. And so we don't use the whole scripture. Is the point that I'm custom fitted to our own desires yes. and preferences. Yes. That's the point well, that I was making. I kind of disagree with that okay. because Battle the teaching that I come from, and I come from a pretty large congregational background, we all eat off the same table, the husband and the wife. And we're all getting fed the same thing. Mm -hmm. So normally in a large congregation like that, you have people who are hearing the same things. Okay. So they're in agreement. The two are in agreement with what's being said. Now, I think it's very, very dangerous when a Christian and a non-Christian gets together. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is totally, totally off limits because how can two walk together unless they be agreed? Now, I, I'm also in agreement that not everyone is following what thus saith the Lord. You have some people who get married who live a fabulous life that haven't lived according to the word of God. Then you've got those Christians who come along and they say, I'm going to do everything by God's word because I'm just that foolish enough to trust him and take him at his word. I happen to be one of those. Okay. Yeah. So. This was a great show today. My guest did an awesome job. Hopefully you got something today. I want to give a big round of applause to my wonderful studio audience and guests. Thank you so much for joining Lady Charmaine Live Show today. And I want to thank you for watching Lady Charmaine Live, and we'll see you real soon.